So Rockset is a search and analytics database that provides low latency response time over real time data. This is the second video in the Rockset database internal series and in this one we touch upon the details around how it actually stores the data in index that makes all types of queries possible and efficient. But before we begin, I would highly recommend you to check out the first video of the series where I spoke about its ALT architecture that makes it truly horizontally scalable database allowing us to ingest data from multiple sources and query data to as much scale as we would want. Now let's go into the specifics on how it actually stores the data. Rockset uses RocksDB Cloud to store the data which is their variant of RocksDB optimized for cloud storage as we saw in the first video. Now RocksDB is a key value store which means whatever data that they are storing needs to be in the format of key end value. The best part, the way that store the data is they call it converge index. Now converge index is its type of a three in one index. It gives you benefits of row based index, column based index and inverted index. The best part of Rockset is that it indexes everything in every possible way, which means you don't need to configure what indexes you want, number one, and you would never have a time that you are seeing a slow query because you missed an index. That typically happens in your traditional databases, right? So you get best of all worlds over here. Now, let's go into specifics on how they store the data. Now, remember, they are storing data in RocksDB Cloud, which is a key value store. So there has to be some key and a value, right? Now, the interesting thing is understand this thing really well, how they store the data, because this is where the magic happens. They, like, given it is a variant of RocksDB, the data that they would be storing would be ordered by key, number one. Right? So the way the key needs to be defined is an important design decision. When they insert a document, this document does not go as is in RocksDB. No. Each document that you ingest is stored multiple times in multiple different ways in this index because it needs to make it efficient for all types of queries. Right? So let's say I have a document called ID with ID 7, which is a movie document having a name and a year. So let's say the name of the movie is Avengers, the year was 2012. This is my document that I'm ingesting. Right? Now this document will be stored in three different optimized ways. One is row based, one is column based, one is search based. Instead of storing each document as is, it stores each attribute independently. For example, in case of row based optimized way, it would store it as r.7.name valuing Avengers. So the row based optimization for document with ID 7 attribute name value is Avengers. Row 7 year 2012. Right? This is row based stuff. Now another set of values that shows is optimized for column where just the order changes. So column C dot name dot 7 arrow Avengers C dot year dot 7 equal to 2012. This is what it stores in for that same document in column oriented format. And for search, it stores s.name.avengers.7 equal to some value. Basically, it is null kind of. And then s.year.2012.7 uh, s equal to something. Now, you'd say, but Arpit, what are these values? Are, are, like, what are these keys? Is there a significance to it? Now, observe the significance. The way, like each document that we saw, like so this document with two attributes was stored had total six values or six entries in the table, right? So two for rows, two for columns, two for n because it has two attributes, right? So there is a high degree of fan out that is happening, right? Now understand the importance of this. If you look closely, the keys are always stored in order in RocksDB because that's how it is the sorted string table files. It is always stored in order, right? The way the keys are arranged, the keys are rather sorry the way the keys are constructed it makes it efficient for a certain type of lookup so first of all the keys are lexicographically ordered which means all r's would be together all c's would be together all s would be together right within r now these are stored in a contiguous memory locations which means all r dot 7 because the second component is 7 they would be they would be staying closer to each other then r dot 15 would be staying closer to each other what is 7 and 15 document ids so all attributes of a single document are placed closer to each other on disk so this makes your row based lookup efficient right because when you say given a key sorry given an id 7 give me all the give me the entire document 
So it does a lookup r.7.star, it gets range queries because RocksDB is optimized for range lookups. It gets that, it constructs the JSON document, responds back to the user. Right. Similarly, for column, well, I'll give you, we'll go through the queries and see how it is efficient. Right? But that's how it stores it. Give me a couple of minutes to touch upon something and then we'll come back to execution part. Right? Now, first thing first, here we are taking a trade-off that given that each document we are putting in is fanned out across so many key value pair, you'd say, but Arbit, there is a very large storage requirement, right? Because you are fanning out. Yes, the storage requirement is high, but it's not very high. In subsequent videos, we'll look into various optimization that it puts in to minimize the additional storage required for this. Right? Second is you'd say that although we are doing it, because my all of the types of queries that I could fire on my data is efficient, I don't need to manage and maintain indexes and remember to create it, to create index of so convenience over storage cost. We would always go for convenience, right? Okay, but you would again think, but Arpit, given when I'm inserting one document, I saw six key value pair being created for the document that we spoke about, right? Isn't that too much? Isn't this right amplification? Yes, right amplification looks like a problem, but it is not. Why? Given that the database is based on top of RocksDB, so the writes that go to RocksDB are buffered in memory and then periodically flushed together on the disk as a contiguous SST file. That does not lead to write amplification because you are just flushing to disk once in one contiguous block of memory. That is why. That is why it is not a problem. Right? Okay. Now, coming back to the query execution that we were discussing. Now, when a query comes to Rockset, it comes to its aggregator node that we saw in the first video. So there, the query optimization takes place. So the first the query is parsed, a parse tree is created, then an optimizer goes in and then creates an optimizer plan or a query execution plan. For this query execution plan, it figures out for this type of query, what, what type of key value should I be looking up for? For example, should I go for R dot based keys or C dot based keys or S dot based keys? I'll give you an example to make you understand very clearly. So let's take an example. Let's do a point lookup. Let's say I want to get uh, the movie with ID 7. So select start from movies where ID is equal to 7. Let's say I want to fire this query. Now what would happen is because my key value pair are arranged in lexicographical order, this is a row optimized query because I am looking for all the attributes of a particular movie. So I would be going for r.7.star dot dot so range lookup on r.7 dot prefix r.7 dot is what i'm looking for your rocksdb is optimized for that so i would fire a query to rocksdb doing a range lookup on r.7.star dot dot i would get everything all the values construct a json respond back to the user that's one second let's say i want to figure out the for each year how many movies were published right so this is a query that is efficient for column based storage which means I don't need the name of the movie and other attributes of the movie. All I'm interested in that within this year or for all the years that are there, I want to aggregate. I want to group and count the total number of movies that happened. Now, if you look carefully, this is an efficient column based query. So I would do what I would look up for keys with C dot year star. I would get all the movies because now these are stored in contiguous memory location. C dot year, all C dot year will be one below another. Right? So I can just go through all such key value pairs that we have. It starts with C dot here. And this is the document ID that I have. This is the value. So I can group by this value, count the unique document IDs that I have, and I'll have my answer. Now, if you look, because these values will be packed closely to each other on disk, my lookup or my disk access are faster. I don't need to do a lot of random lookups on the disk. Right? Then for the third one, let's say I want to select count star from movies where year is equal to 2011. So I want to have the count of all the movies that happened in year 2011. This is very efficient for inverted index base because for that year, for that value, I would want to count the total number of uh, documents that are there, right? So I would use my search index s dot year dot 2011 because I'm storing s dot attribute dot value dot document ID. If you look carefully, or all s dot year dot 2011 will be stored one after another on the disk. Right? Because my keys are ordered by, uh, sorry, my keys are stored in, in orderly fashion, right? So all the keys with s dot attribute dot value will be placed together. 
and then I just need to count the number of entries in the range lookup. Right? Such a fascinating concept. So in just one index, which is converge index, the way the data is stored, it makes your row based lookup efficient, your column based lookup efficient, your inverted index based lookup efficient. This is the magic of converge indexing. This was when I was going through internals, this concept was really fascinating and I was shell shocked on how easy this thing is, but it was so difficult to catch it, right? Like it was right staring at us, this approach, but this was one of the most interesting, like this made me very curious about Rockset as a database. And I, I thought of creating this video series on Rockset internals. So yeah, this was the second video in the Rockset database internal series. I hope you found it interesting. Hope you found it amusing. That's it for this one. I'll see you in the next one. Thanks a ton.